My name is Andreas Ziolas. I'm chief scientist for Varian's Dynamical Corporation. Varian's Dynamical was uh, was founded in uh, in 2000 by uh, by Paul Goodwin, who's who's the initial inventor of the technology. Uh, Paul Goodwin is a PhD in in physics and in uh, um, space physics, and uh, has been a student for educational. Um, uh, for various educational and learning, you know, methodologies, which which uh, led him into into neurophysics. So this, and through through his study of neurophysics, he was studying various models of the of the human brain. As of there are very very many models, but one of them led to a design architecture, which he believed could be modeled electronically. What we believe as a company is that. The, the digital revolution was spawned by some of the inadequacies of, of the analog world in that we were, we, we followed, uh, you know, the world followed a very di pro-digital developmental phase. You know, now that we have these digital systems, it's time to revisit some of the lessons and some of the, the technologies that we can develop in the analog world. So far, I've been, I've been leading the effort. Uh, because I fit uh, Paul Goodwin's, who, who passed away, uh, his, I fit his shoes fairly appropriately. We have almost exactly the same PhD and almost exactly the same background. You know, he's, he was a theoretical physicist and worked in space physics. It was exactly the same background as mine. The NL was patented in 2009. And uh, since then, we've built a, a series of prototypes, some incarnations of, of similar designs with the ones that we've modeled on the breadboard, on printed circuit boards to, to reduce some of the noise and to, and to make a step closer to, to the complexity that of, the, of the circuit that we would want in, a, in an integrated circuit. And uh, there's also been an integrated circuit effort um, and chips produced to test um, some of the some of the capabilities on that that type of platform. We were awarded an, a National Science Foundation grant in 2011, the follow-up Phase One B grant uh, in 2012 for developing the the core uh, model and theoretical models for the electronic neural loop. So this helped in um, acting as a springboard for for getting some of the basics, the basic understanding of the architecture of the circuit built so that we can do, we can tune it to various things. So out came various incarnations of bandpass filters, notch filters, and multiple signal analysis platform. Uh, essentially, the breadboard prototypes developed during the NSF verified that the, that the patents uh, were uh, buildable as they as they, as they describe in the patents uh, that that the essential incarnation the basic incarnation of the NL uh, from the exemplar is is one that can be produced and produces the the measurable effect that's claimed in the patents. The ENL uses uh, electrical version of a mechanical vibration on a string. It's like playing a guitar note. So when you strike a guitar note that note that's produced depends on the length of the of the guitar string right so you play that tone now that tone you know may, has that beautiful sound because it resonates we use an electronic wi a piece of wire to resonate at that particular signal now the trick is to not just have it resonate because that's a very weak effect is to drive that is to try to preserve that resonance and try to amplify that resonance. Okay, and that's what the patents were based on, and what the innovation that Paul Goodwin made to the to the field is that I'm going to try and feed feed that back to save that frequency and to have it ampli amplify. The ENL uh, produces resonances in a closed loop feedback architecture. You have a um, y you have a a transistor and there is a transmission line on one side, there's another transmission line on the other side. So when the signal comes in, it travels through one of the transmission lines, it resonates here, it hits the second one, there's a node here and a node here. Like in order to get a resonance, you need two stable points. So these are called band, uh, boundary conditions. And the boundary condition for, for an oscillating wire or a loop or a signal, you need, you need a standard, you need a stable point. So between these two stable points, if we had unraveled one of these transmission lines, let's say that this is transmission line two, 
you get various standing waves. So when these standing waves match from one of the loops to the other loop, you get a feedback. You can see you know, what it would look like if you unraveled that, that circle. Um, you can invert the signal in the middle, you can still get an, an oscillation here, or you can invert this signal and make a notch filter. In this particular device, we, we can see the transmission lines left and right, the input signal comes through here, it goes through one of the transmission lines, it, resonance, it resonates once, and then it goes through a second transmission line, it resonates again, and then it's fed back into the input. So this is the visual of what we're talking about, the input, the signal that's coming in, gets, it resonates at the characteristic frequency of the transmission line, let's say on the right here, and then it's fed back through a second transmission line to, to the other uh, to the other one, and it keeps on going. So the signal is essentially trapped inside these pa this pair of transmission. Now what happens with all the other stray, stray frequencies is, let me draw your attention to this blue one here. So it, when there are frequencies like this one and the orange one, and the purple one, which do not match the length of the transmission line, They're, they bounce randomly, oops, they bounce randomly and they're attenuated. So if this is all, if all of these is the input signal, let's say that it's Wi-Fi, broadband and a Bluetooth signal, it's just a big mess and a couple of Wi-Fi transmitters, it's all crazy. But this is the, this is a transmission line of the ENL. Well, the ENL resonates at this one signal and the other ones come inside there and they start bouncing around just producing heat and they deteriorate. This one resonates and is, tra and is transferred to the next part and is traveled to the next part. These frequencies also travel to the next part, but they don't preserve, they don't survive for very long because they just hit random, they, their boundary conditions aren't matched, you know, technically speaking, and they just bounce around the interfaces and they decay. So that's what happens. The longer, the longer it stays, that one frequency grows and the rest of the frequencies get uh, decrease. So now you get identification of the signal so that, that you want. Is that why uh, Dr. Goodwin said that it, it recognizes frequencies? That's exactly why he said it. It recognizes these frequencies. The NL recognizes these frequencies based on their wavelength. This all has to do with the wavelength and the frequency. So when the, when the wavelength matches the, an integral number of quarter wavelengths, then it's able to, be, to resonate in this, in this transmission line. So this is what interested me as a physicist to get into this. Um, you know, I worked in spacecraft engineering and telemetry and things like that. We use digital si si signals. We use some off-the-shelf bandpass filters, GPS filters. Like it's not, it's not, it's not remarkable to find a bandpass filter at whatever frequency you want, right? They exist. There are they are they exist. What is remarkable is to find a bandpass filter to find a device that does something that you don't expect it to do. One of the objectives of this particular NSF proposal was, was to match theory to theory to practice. Because this is an untested approach, because it's fraught with areas of uh, electronic theory where, uh, I, I guess in practice, where you, you really shouldn't go. So you shouldn't be connecting a resonant s circuit to a feedback loop at, at all, you know, never. So we had to justify some of this. So this goes to justifying the claims of the patent. This is theory. This is experiment. Um, <clears throat> the output of the, of the network analyzer. And we have very, very good um, matching of, of the input and the output. The only thing that- second spike there. Uh, it's nothing. It's just an aberration from the, from the signal. It's like a trigger that comes in. It's, it's not, not, not part of the NL. These kinds of, of oscillations uh, happen and they're a undesirable effect in, in electronic circuits usually. You don't want this to happen because they tend to grow, the resonances tend to grow. 
they tend to saturate your signal and they do really bad things in, in your circuit. So the power of these resonances keeps on growing. So a very, very uh, un, um, a very bad idea when you have a resonance is to try to feed the resonance back into the resonance itself. So you're not just receiving this resonance, you're amplifying the re resonance via a feedback loop. So this is something that you absolutely not want to do. However, this is one of the principles that was under investigation by, by Paul Goodwin and using, using waveguide theory, he uh, you know, postulated that, that there should be a way to control this. So there have to be some method of attenuation of the signal, there'd have to be some controlled uh, resonance. So in principle, if you try to plug these things into um, to a resonant feedback uh, system, you know, in an electronic theory and in control theory, you would you would get bad, very bad results. You'd get you'd get a signal amplifying, you know, and essentially saturating your signal and blowing up. So this is what that that looks like. This is a this is a runaway transmission line ENL, which is one that we built and tested to see if it was just one resonant frequency. It's essentially the the placebo to what you didn't wouldn't want to do. Okay, so this is what you would want to avoid. So we built one of the ones that you'd want to avoid and just made sure that it actually, you know, runs off and, and does bad things to the signal. So I'd have to cut it off. I had a gain stage here. I'd have to cut it off so it doesn't, doesn't destroy the, the... So is that an actual um, result or is that a this simulation? Is, this is an actual result, yeah. So uh, now this is, this is a result from one of the NLs that we built in the development, it's called the Mark II, and it's essentially an ENL with, two, with a feedback. It's the first ENL with a feedback stage. So now we're feeding back, we're feeding back the signal back through the, the input and through some careful tuning, which is a trade secret, we are able to stabilize the input signal after just three cycles. The smaller the transmission line is, the higher the frequency. So when you go up to the gigahertz range, you're looking at about three centimeters transmission lines. We verified that, that the resonances that lead to the bandpass filter operation of the, of the NL are indeed controlled by the transmission length. This is one of the tenets of the operation of the NL. The key factor, I guess, to go into this a little bit more is, is the speed of transmission and, or the delay time throughout the transmission line. The speed of transmission defines essentially the electronic length of, of, the, of the wire, the delay time. How long does it take the signal to travel through this line? That is the measurement of the, the, of the delay. Now, if the impedance of the line is higher, then it takes longer to travel. So the impedance is like the resistance on, uh, you know, an AC circuit. It's when it's a little bit more complicated. You don't just have resistance. So on a, on a PCB, the resistance is high. It's a very grassroots technical innovation. It's not, it's not a red iPhone. It's not a gold iPhone. Oh, it's gold. It's, it's got a bigger screen. That, that's not what this is. That's not what this is. I, I, I see this as a tool that you would put in the hands of people who want to innovate or who have an idea or who you know have a problem and they know that there's an ENL over here and they go, oh, maybe this will work. So you don't have to say, there's no way you can do it and I have the only way to do it. There's another way, there's another way to do it. Figure out your value for using this kind of technology based on what it is. It's not possible to, to, to try to foresee exactly what the ENL would be used uh, because it's, at the component, it's a component level innovation. It's, it's like trying to to anticipate how a resistor would be used or how a transistor would be used. You offer a couple of things, but then, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you'd have to leave it up to the developers.